Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice in heart and soul, daughter of Zion. Shout with gladness, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your ruler comes to you victorious and triumphant, humble, riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The ruler were banished chariots from Ephraim and horses from Jerusalem. The bow will be banished. The ruler will proclaim peace for the nations, the empire stretching from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, do to the prisoners, as for you, do to the blood covenant with me, I am returning your prisoners from their waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will give you back double. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palms along the way. Let these branches be for us a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim His mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them, I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. 
God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent off two of the disciples with this instruction, Go to the village straight ahead of you, and as soon as you enter it, you will find tethered there a colt on which no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it back. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing it? Say, The rabbi needs it but we'll send it back very soon. So they went off, and finding a colt tethered out on the street near a gate, they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What do you mean by untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them take it. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks across its back, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. And everyone around Jesus, in front or in back of him, cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is the coming reign of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple precincts. He inspected everything there, but since it was already late in the afternoon, he went out to Bethany, accompanied by the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of one God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, God's people. This morning, I am going to try something that I've only ever done once before, and um, I'm, I'm pretty nervous about it. Okay. So um, I always preach from inside of a pulpit or behind a reading desk. Um, even virtually, I need a music stand in front of me with, with a full manuscript. And um, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with preaching that way. I will still be mostly preaching that way. But um, there are times when when I have felt God calling me to try something different, um, but I've always felt too scared. Um, I'm trying it today, which may seem silly because you aren't even here in the church with me, but I, I promise it's still, it's still pretty scary. Um, but I felt called to be brave and even though in-person worship may be on pause, it turns out God's calling for us to step out in faith is not. And so I felt called to step out, quite literally, 
in faith this morning. We are entering the part of Christian life, Holy Week, when we're called to be brave, and, and not just brave, um, humble, curious, intentional, vulnerable, but also brave. It's brave to wave our palms in the air on Palm Sunday, especially with those who us who've been in the church know how quickly our waving palms will turn to shouting, crucify him. But in that moment of waving palms, we manifest God's kingdom on earth, even, even for just a moment. We take to the streets, we protest the status quo, Hosanna, we cry, save us, it means. From what? Jesus asks us. And for many, many complicated reasons, that question is too much for us to handle. In our fear, we turn away. We turn away from him, and we turn away from our deepest longings. But for a moment, we proclaimed God's kingdom on earth, and then Jesus continues alone out of his love for us. So in family worship, we've been talking about Lent as the time when Jesus takes big chances. And he takes big chances because Jesus believes that God's love is stronger than everything. And that is brave. As six-year-old Elizabeth told us, taking big chances means doing something risky, even though you don't know if it's going to work out. And we've been talking about that in adult education, too, looking at the stories of Holy Week through the frame of what does Jesus risk here? In Holy Week's past, maybe it hasn't felt so risky to open your lives, to open your hearts to this journey. But for the last 13 months, We've been living in a world where our hearts have been beaten and bruised and broken. And this year, it feels both simultaneously important and really hard to be brave. So in preparing for this meditation, I found myself thinking about another time in my life when I was invited to be brave. It was in a church basement at a conference in Cleveland, Ohio, with 80 other people in the, the Episcopal Church who had come together to talk, of all things, about evangelism. And in that basement, we were asked to meditate on two questions. And I'm going to ask us to spend some time meditating on those questions, too, and inviting you to answer them from your own story. So I invite you to make sure that you're seated comfortably. Take a deep breath. You're welcome to close your eyes. And I want to ask you to think about a time when you really struggled. It doesn't need to be the biggest struggle or heartbreak you've ever gone through, be discerning and gentle with yourself. Maybe right now is not the time to bring that story to the forefront of your mind. But, but when is a time you struggled? When you hit a wall, you felt weighed down, felt like giving up. When was a time your heart was broken or your world was turned upside down? 
hold it. And holding that memory, I want you to wonder and to remember when did you feel the turn? Something shifted, something awakened. You felt the slightest movement, the tiniest hope that new life was forming. And if that turn hasn't happened in this struggle yet, what is that, that small nugget of hope where God meets you in the struggle? Hold the struggle. Remember the turn. You can open your eyes. Now, at the conference, we took our, um, our pieces of paper and we walked around the room showing each other the first side of our page and then flipping it over to show the turn. We didn't know each other and um, we walked around the room in silence. We didn't speak while we did this, which might sound awkward, but I have never felt so seen and so loved. The intention and tenderness as someone approached you, the nod of understanding as they read the struggle, the warm smile, <laughs> the mutual celebration in the turn. And we didn't know all the details of what was on the paper and we, we didn't have to. We just needed to show up for each other, to bear witness to the struggles and to celebrate the turn, the turn that brings new life. Now many, many times that memory, that exercise has, <laughs> has inspired me to be brave when I didn't think I could be. And I want to extend that invitation to you in part because we need to be brave. We need to be brave if we are going to see the suffering in our lives and in the world around us. Because there's so much suffering and, and more and more that suffering feels both senseless and inevitable. The eight people killed in the Atlanta area from a gunman who was targeting Asian American women working at massage parlors someone who was living out exactly what our white supremacist culture teaches us, which is to see Asian American and Pacific Islanders as over-sexualized, as weak, as disposable. And then this most recent week, a gunman walks into a grocery store and kills 10 people for doing one of the most ordinary, everyday tasks of life, shopping for food. And as people of faith, this should strike us especially, considering how central eating is to God's promise. I know we haven't gotten to take Eucharist together for a long time, but Jesus centers his teaching, and especially in Holy Week, Jesus centers what he does on the journey to the cross in coming to a table and eating together. We imagine God's kingdom as the holy banquet. And so if, if collecting, harvesting, cooking, and sharing food 
is a symbol of our life of faith together, then especially this mass shooting should show us without a doubt the way that the senseless violence in this country, especially through gun violence, is keeping God's people apart from each other and from God. The suffering in our world is destroying God's people. And to look on, to look at the suffering on our neighbors' papers, on our neighbors' faces, we have to be brave. <laughs> but even more, I feel brave because of those testimonies of the turn. The possibility that things do not have to stay this way. The bold proclamation that our stories, our struggles are a part of God's story. It grows in us this deep and sometimes foolish hope that God is always at work in our lives, especially in the midst of suffering. That is what Holy Week is about, which begins today. During this week ahead, we are called to live into God's story through Jesus' final days, to bear witness to his suffering, to let it break our hearts so that they might be turned and made new by the miracle of Easter. So this meditation is actually an invitation to live into Holy Week, to step out in faith, whatever that might look like for you, to be brave, to see what God can do, to come to our church services, to go through this journey together. I want to close with an image of what this might look like, a poem written by Mickey Bay Scott Jones, which is entitled, An Invitation to Brave Space. Together we will create brave space because there is no such thing as a safe space. We exist in the real world. We all carry scars and we all have caused wounds. In this space, we seek to turn down the volume of the outside world. We amplify voices that fight to be heard elsewhere. We call each other to more truth and love. We have the right to start somewhere and then continue to grow. We have the responsibility to examine what we think we know. We will not be perfect. This space will not be perfect. It will not always be what we wish it to be. But it will be our brave space together. And we will work on it side by side. May it be so. Amen. I invite you now to join in the prayers. The response to the prayers today is, Lord, have mercy. And at the moments where I invite your prayers, your intercessions or thanksgivings, please do so aloud in your home, in the silence of your heart, or in the comments of this live stream. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city of Philadelphia, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has created, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Especially let us pray for those on our own hearts and minds who are ill or in need of help. We pray for those killed in the shootings around Atlanta, in the shooting in Boulder, we pray for all who love them. We pray for an end to gun violence. We continue to pray for an end to white supremacy and for the courage and strength to do our part in dismantling it. I ask your continued prayers for Katie, for Pat and Joe and Judith. For all of these things, both spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially for those who died near Atlanta and in Boulder, for those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts or in the chat. And for all who have died, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of Peter, of Mary, the mother of God, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God, to you, O Lord, our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together in the words Jesus taught us. Together we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to share God's peace with those in your home, those passing by on the street, and in the chat on this live stream. The peace of Christ be always with you.
Good morning. It is a pleasure to have you welcoming with us this morning. If you are here for the first time, I wish you a special welcome. And I invite you to fill out the newcomers form that should be appearing in the chat on the live stream. That'll help us get to know each other a little better. I'm, the announcements this morning are fairly brief and as you might expect are focused on Holy Week. I invite you to walk this week with us at St. Peter's. There are services every day of the week. So Monday through Thursday there is morning prayer at 8.30. That will be on Facebook. Monday through Wednesday at 6.30 p.m is an evening service for Holy Week with the readings for the day and prayers and a reflection. That will be on YouTube. On Maundy Thursday, I invite you to join us via Zoom for an agape meal. That is a meal that is um, ancient in the Christian tradition. It is not a Passover Seder. We are not trying to reenact anything, nor are we appropriating a service that belongs rightly to our Jewish siblings. We are um, having a feast together to remember Jesus' last meal with his friends and his command that we serve one another and love one another as he loved us. So I invite you to join that on Zoom at 6.30. It is um, obviously a bring your own meal event. On Good Friday, there are two opportunities to worship with us. At noon is the Book of Common Prayers service for Good Friday that includes prayers, a reading of the Passion Gospel, the veneration of the cross, um, and so I invite you to join us for that. And then at 2 p.m., we will have the Stations of the Cross. If you have not had the chance to walk the Stations of the Cross along Pine Street, I encourage you to do so. They are um, drawn by Mary Button, who is a Lutheran pastor and artist. And the, the focus for this year's Stations of the Cross is the pandemic and the theme of hope in the midst of pandemic. If you can't get to St. Peter's and walk them here, they are available on our website, as is information about all of the services I'm pointing out now. Finally, on Holy Saturday, that day of in-betweenness, of waiting and not being able to do anything but wait, we will have a 10 a.m. very simple service of a reading and prayers. And then on Easter Sunday, I invite you to join us for the family worship via Zoom at 9 a.m. or for our Easter service at 11. That will be a service of Eucharist. It will be virtual communion, but um, we will celebrate communion spiritually together. So I invite you to join us for all of that. If you have any questions, please contact Sarah or me or Kate in the church office. Also, if you would like to make an Easter memorial um, in, in memory of a loved one of yours who has died or in honor of someone, you may do so. Send that donation to the church office. And this year, instead of providing for music, additional instruments for worship and or for flowers, that money will go to support our Chorister Academy. So supporting young children in um, singing and in their growth and love of music. And now I invite us, as we prepare to turn towards hearing the Passion Gospel, the Gospel of the death, with a story of the death of Jesus, I invite you to take a deep breath with me, to be still, to settle both emotionally and physically, to become aware of God's presence within and all around us. We'll now hear a choir anthem followed by the Passion Gospel.
Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to St. Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Judeans? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and be began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Judeans? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Judeans? They shouted back, Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Judeans. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Please stand. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Judeans. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, ah you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes who were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filling a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it, in this way, he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. <laughs> 